A 500 kilo spacecraft the size of a washing machine will crash down to Earth within the next 48 hours. Look up at the sky this week, and somewhere above you, a Cold War relic is racing toward Earth. We're talking about Cosmos 482, a 1,100 pound Soviet spacecraft that has been orbiting our planet for more than 53 years. Now, after half a century circling silently overhead, it's making its fiery, uncontrolled return. Why is this making headlines? Why are space agencies on high alert? Because Cosmos 482 isn't just any satellite. It's a Venus lander, a machine built to endure the crushing pressures and searing temperatures of one of the most brutal planets in our solar system. This isn't some flimsy weather satellite that will harmlessly burn up on re-entry. No, this is a titanium armored half-ton spacecraft designed to survive the impossible. And now, as it plunges back to Earth, scientists and observers around the world are asking the same questions. Will it burn up in the atmosphere? Or will parts of it survive the fall? Where will it land? And why, after so many decades, does this old Soviet machine still have the world's attention? Let's rewind the clock a bit to understand how we even got here. The early 1970s was not just the time of the Soviet Union's race to the moon, it was also an era of reaching toward Venus. While NASA focused on lunar missions, the Soviets poured resources into their Venera program, aiming to explore one of the most extreme planets in the solar system. Venus isn't just hot, it's hellishly hot, with surface temperatures over 460 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure strong enough to crush a submarine. To survive there, a spacecraft had to be a beast of engineering, armored to handle conditions far harsher than anything on Earth. The Soviets did something they could boast about on March 27, 1972. Venera 8 landed on Venus and sent back unprecedented data. After four days, they tried again using Cosmos 482 to complete the mission, but something went wrong. It was launched on a Molnia 8K-78M rocket from Baikonur Cosmodrome. The launch itself had gone smoothly, but disaster ensued in the final stage. The Block L upper stage failed. Instead of heading to Venus, the craft was stranded in Earth orbit. Rather than admit the failure, the Soviet Union quietly renamed it Cosmos 482, filing it away under their generic military satellite series. For decades, it drifted silently above our heads, a ghost of the Cold War, long forgotten. Here's where things get interesting. Most defunct satellites eventually fall back to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere within a few years or decades. But Cosmos 482 was no ordinary satellite. It was a Venus lander, a rugged titanium armored module weighing nearly half a ton, built to survive atmospheric pressure 100 times greater than Earth's and temperatures that would melt lead. That toughness is exactly why, more than 50 years later, it's still up there, and why space agencies are now watching it closely. This isn't the first time Cosmos 482 has made contact with Earth, either. Just days after its failed launch in April 1972, several titanium fuel tanks broke off and crashed near Ashburton, New Zealand. Locals were stunned to find strange metallic orbs embedded in the ground. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but true to Cold War secrecy, the Soviets denied involvement. The debris was quietly confirmed to be from Cosmos 482. Now, however, it's not just fuel tanks we're worried about, it's the whole main body, the toughest part of the mission. As of May 9, 2025, space agencies around the world, from the European Space Agency to U.S. Space Command, are tracking Cosmos 482's descent. As of May 9, 2025, the European Space Agency's Space Debris Office predicts Cosmos 482 will re-enter Earth's atmosphere around May 10, at 626 UTC, with a margin of error of about plus or minus 4.35 hours. That means its fiery plunge could happen anywhere from the middle of the night to mid-morning UTC time. And if the lander remains intact, experts estimate it could hit Earth's surface at speeds of around 150 miles per hour. That's roughly 240 kilometers per hour. That might sound vague, but predicting uncontrolled re-entries is notoriously tricky. Why? because space is chaotic. Solar activity affects atmospheric drag. The craft's tumbling changes how much resistance it encounters. And even tiny shifts in angle can swing its landing point by hundreds 
or thousands of kilometers. What we know so far is that the potential impact zone stretches between 52 degrees north and 52 degrees south latitude, basically covering most of the inhabited world, from Europe and North America to Asia, Australia, and South America. Most likely the spacecraft will harmlessly splash into the ocean, simply because Earth is mostly water. But there's always a slim chance it could come down over land, which is why agencies are keeping a close eye and why the world is buzzing with updates. You might wonder, if something goes wrong and Cosmos 482 causes damage, who's responsible? International space law has that covered. Under the 1967 Outer Space Treaty and the 1972 Liability Convention, the country that launches a space object is fully liable for any damage it causes on Earth no matter how many years later. That means Russia, as the legal heir to the old Soviet Union, would be responsible for any damage or injuries caused by Cosmos 482 if it ever comes crashing down. And there's a real-world example to back this up. In 1978, another Soviet satellite, Cosmos 954, fell out of orbit and scattered radioactive debris all over a huge stretch of Canada. Canada sent the USSR a cleanup bill for over $6 million. The Soviets eventually paid about half. Thankfully, Cosmos 482 isn't nuclear-powered, but if it hits something or someone, the legal responsibility is clear. Beyond the immediate risks, the story of Cosmos 482 taps into a much larger issue, the growing crisis of space debris. Today, over 36,500 objects larger than 10 centimeters are tracked in Earth's orbit, alongside around a million pieces between 1 and 10 centimeters, and an estimated 130 million smaller fragments. These aren't just harmless leftovers. At orbital speeds of up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, even a tiny paint chip can punch through a spacecraft. And if two large objects collide, they can generate clouds of debris, leading to what scientists call the Kessler syndrome a chain reaction of collisions that could render some orbits unusable for decades. That's why agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency are investing heavily in solutions. Drag sails that help satellites deorbit safely, nets and harpoons designed to capture defunct satellites, and better debris tracking systems. As the countdown to re-entry continues, the world holds its breath. Will Cosmos 482 burn up in a spectacular show over the ocean? Or will it survive and leave a final mark on Earth's surface? We will see it in the next two days. The clock is ticking. Don't miss out on more incredible space stories. Subscribe now and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when we uncover the next big moment happening above our heads. Stay tuned.